Hey everyone, Brett Kelly here for another Tuesday Tech Tip at 45 Drives. Um, today I want to talk about multi-site clusters. Um, it's a topic that comes up a lot, people are very interested in it, um, the idea of having a cluster across multiple physical locations. Uh, so what I want to do is demystify the concept of it and kind of lay out the ground rules of what you can and what you can't do with uh, multi-site clustering. Okay, so before I get into the specifics of multi-site, I want to make it absolutely clear that multi-site clustering is not equal to disaster recovery. There are two different concepts here. Disaster recovery is a one-way sync from your primary storage location to somewhere else. Should that disaster strike in your primary location, you can all pull back from this. But remember, one way. It goes one direction. If you make changes on one end here, it does not get sent back to the primary. Anyway, we've got other resources on what DR is. You can check that out. Multi-site clustering, as we are calling it here and as we are with Ceph, is a two-way sync between your multiple locations, meaning that primary site A uh, and site B, secondary, you could access the same data from either or. If you make a change here, it shows up over in site A, vice versa, and so that's it. Multi-site is not DR, DR is one way, multi-site is two-way. Okay, so with the definitions out of the way, we can dig into multi-site. Like I said, multi-site, you keep your data in sync between the two of them. You work from one, it shows up in the other, vice versa. So sync, that's the keyword sync. But there's two ways to think about multi-site um, clusters. Yes, they're always in sync, but are they synchronous, as in they're always exactly in sync with each other, or are they asynchronous, as in it happens one and then it eventually gets pushed over to the other one relatively quickly. Okay, so I'll start with synchronous multi-site Ceph clusters. Ceph in its nature is synchronous. What I mean by that is if I make a write and it's got to be distributed to all the many nodes of Ceph, until me, the client, I will not see this as finished until all participating uh, storage locations in the cluster say, yep, got the file, we're done. So what that means is if any part of your storage infrastructure is in a lower network connection than the other ones, whether that's high latency or just too low a bandwidth, doesn't matter how fast the other ones is, you will apparently see only the speed of your slowest link. Classic bottleneck stuff, right? Ceph is synchronous by nature. That's why you want it all on a high speed network and stuff like that. So when I say a synchronous multi-site, think one cluster spanned across multiple locations. Now, this is great because it's relatively simple. Ceph just works the same way. You have access to file, block, and object. It's just one big Ceph cluster. It's logically all there. It doesn't know it's in two separate sites. But remember what I said about the bottleneck. In a, in a span cluster, you're synchronous by default. Therefore, you're, if, if, you're, if your bandwidth is too low, or if your latency is too high, then your span cluster is gonna be too, feel too sluggish to use, and a span multi-site is not gonna work in your case. So particularly where I'm getting at is you cannot do this across the internet or a large geographic location. Okay, in this case, how are you gonna get around Ceph's synchronous nature by default? Well, the first one was one span cluster across multi-sites. These are one individual cluster in multiple sites that are all aware and in sync with each other. So how this works is you get the benefit of the synchronous nature of Ceph in each individual high speed networks that they're on and then their larger, uh, lower latency link or whatever, they keep in sync and push data around that way. Awesome. There's only a little bit of a caveat, like everything I said with the first one, well, the caveat, you get everything, but the caveat is you need the right networking between everything. This one is you're limited to the S3 object protocol or RBD mirroring. Um, due to the way the file object and block works, the block and object, um, protocol entrances into the Ceph cluster play a lot nicer to this asynchronous will sync later nature. Very tough challenge to solve with file systems. So um, when you are doing asynchronous, so multi-site, multi-region kind of locations, with Ceph clusters you are limited to S3 and block storage only. However, you don't really have to worry about the network location. So if you have uh, an S3 object store cluster in New York and you needed the secondary location down in LA and they share their, locate, their data that way, 
an asynchronously multi-site um, S3 gateway into your Ceph cluster will achieve your needs. Okay, so that is the rundown on building Ceph clusters that span multiple sites. Multi-site Ceph clustering is not DR. It is a two-way synchronization of your data between sites. And remember, when you get into it, there's a synchronous multi-site cluster and an asynchronous multi-site cluster. Think for synchronous, one spanned cluster across multiple locations, but they require a good high network between them all. And asynchronous is one unique cluster in multiple locations that all keep in sync with each other, that don't require big beefy networks in between it. A uh, public internet connection would be fine, or if you're on a uh, large geographical distance. So if you're in the need of a multi-site cluster, uh, reach out. We'd love to help you uh, get the right solution for your environment, your location, um, your needs. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. We'd love to hear from you. Multi-site.